Hi and welcome to a hands-on tutorial on Google's in-page analytics. I'm Sadhmishta from Stylusync and I'm going to think together with you on tracking your customer behavior. Before we begin, let me set the context for when and why you could use Google's in-page analytics. Let's say you've launched a website to market your product and you're waiting for customers to start coming in and buying your product. When you're selling your products, you do have a lot of happy customers who like what they've bought from you. But you also notice that there are some visitors who come in but you don't see them buying your product or even contacting you on the website. You may be wondering what are they even doing on your website or are they just window shoppers? On the other hand, you also find dissatisfied users or visitors. You don't have a clue as to why they're not buying your product. Is there a problem with the product offering or are there technical glitches on your site? You still have to figure out why some users are not end up becoming your customers. One way to find out how most of your users or customers are behaving on your website is to use this great tool from Google called as in-page analytics. Now let me step you through what you get to see on our website stylusync.net using Google's in-page analytics. When you come to the home page of Google Analytics, on the left side you will notice a link called as content and clicking on this link will bring down a list of items and one of them is the in-page analytics link. And when you click on this, you come across a page wherein you will be able to see the live website that you are trying to track. And also you see these orange balloons with some numbers on them. At first sight, these don't help much because they are just percentage numbers. But then you see here a metric called as clicks. So what you are seeing presently is the distribution of clicks on the home page of the Stylusync website. Let's stick with the clicks for the time being and investigate a bit more. You see here that 12% of all visitors who come to this particular page are interested in knowing about who we are. We also see that 13% of all of them who come to this website or come to this page are interested in contacting us. Well, that's a good sign. But how many of these are really our target audience is a question we need to ask right now. How do we then filter out our targeted audience from just window shoppers on the website? Now, if you go to add filter here, this particular function helps you to add certain filters based on the demographics of your target customers. For example, let's say that I want to just look at visits or visitors from a certain country and that country would be United States. The moment I apply this filter, you will start seeing the numbers shuffle. So when you see these numbers, you realize that the numbers have gone down. You have about 4% of all visitors from the United States who are interested in inquiring with us. What's also interesting on the left side of this page uh, is the level of detail you see on the page with respect to the filter that we've applied, that is customers or users who are coming from the United States. We see how much time they're spending on this website, how many of them are exiting prematurely from this page, and also what kind of screen resolutions of operating systems or browsers they're using when they're browsing our website. What we also see is the kind of pages that they are coming from within the website to the home page of this website. Now what is of interest to us now is that after the home page or the main page, how do we see the user navigation to the other pages? Let's say that this particular link here called as BI Readiness Assessment is an important link for us uh, in order to get inquiries. So when I click on this particular page, I will come to know how users have used or viewed this particular page on the website. On clicking this, you also will start seeing that the numbers on the left side will tend to change. And we'll also get to see different kinds of balloons on the site. So you see here that there are equal number of people who have gone to other places from this particular page. What of course you don't notice is a very interesting thing as you go to the last button here. Is that you don't see anyone who has clicked on the submit button. Does this mean that nobody has really used this form? Not really. What it means is that 
Google sometimes doesn't track JavaScript tags on a page. Uh, in, in that sense, it would not be able to track some of these dynamic pages which are here, which are cached in. This is something that Google will definitely be working on. But what this helps you to get is a bird's eye view of how your customers really navigated. You may be surprised to notice that most of them ended up navigating home through the breadcrumb rather than through the, the main menu link which we put up here. You also see one more, uh, one more detail here, which is when I mouse over this home button, you see that nearly the same percentage of people have clicked on this breadcrumb and on the logo. What does this mean? It simply means that Google is unable to track different clicks on the page, uh, in which case some of these links, are, some of these clicks are leading to the same page. It's unable to track uh, the different kinds of layouts or places where you do click in order to go to the same page. Although in-page analytics helps you to get a grasp of your customer's motivations when it comes to your website, there are some drawbacks like the first one which I told you that Google cannot track how people click on, this, on different parts of your page leading to the same link. But also Google hasn't developed a feature for your dynamic pages or content. For example, if you had an apparel store and were adding new items to your home page dynamically, Google cannot track as to how many of your customers were interested in the product. The reason for this is the trending data on dynamic content is quite difficult and Google doesn't store snapshots of your dynamic pages. However, if you do have a link for that item that is persistent, you will be able to track it. Also at present, Google does not have more than one filter active here, which means you have to clear this filter in order to add a new filter in order to segment your demographic data. But another way you can tackle this is after you've added a filter, you can go to the segment called as advanced segments on the right top tab. What this does is once you, let's say, put a filter called as users from the United States and you also want to know people who come from Facebook from the United States. When you click on this, you can add an advanced segment called as FB or Facebook. And once you've done that, you would be able to see all Facebook users to this particular page. You would be able to see more numbers if you were to move on other more popular pages on the site. Having said that, this is still a great tool to better understand which parts of your website or which items in your web, web store are really moving. So go on Googling and find out how it works for your business. But if you need any help at all to work this out for your business, Stylusing is always around to think together with you.